We're live. College football week six preview. College football week six. We're almost halfway through. Dylan. Stop. 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 I know. Stop. I know. But this late this week, there's a reason uh, college game day is going to Berkeley this week. Because <laughs> <laughs> ACC bump. ACC <laughs> bump. Cal- I guess. Algorithm. Calgorithm. Cal- the Calgorithm, yeah. Cal versus Miami. I think Cal Twitter single-handedly pushed college game day to come to come to Berkeley this week because why on earth would you ever go to Berkeley for this game? You look, I mean, go to A&M at least. I know they've already been there this year, but go again. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I know why they'd go to Berkeley. It, it is because of the Calgorithm. Um, I saw on the Calgorithm on my timeline a picture of Lee Corso, AI generated, putting on a Karl Marx um head <laughs> and going not so fast my friend uh, so hopefully we do see that this saturday we just we just see leak corso go full lib <laughs> <laughs> he would uh, they, never the whole he show is like them endorsing harris and kamala harris and all that <laughs> oh my gosh that would be so funny college football would freak out but what happened last week dylan what happened last weekend in college football Alabama rolled, just like I said. You know, Alabama Alabama took care of their business. They took care of their business. And Jalen Milrow is now the Heisman favorite, just like I said. They didn't end up winning by two scores, but... They might as well have. Yeah, they really might as well have. Because towards the end of that game, I think we even talked about it in our group chat, is like the Alabama kind of softened up the defense a little bit, let Georgia roll down. Now, I don't know how much you can say when they tie the game up. Like, obviously, they're not letting them do that, but... Yeah, great game. That's what college football is all about. Probably the best quarter, the fourth quarter, the best quarter of college football I've watched in a while. I mean, it was absolutely mm-hmm. electric. They, they won by two scores in our hearts. Yes, yes. A, a consolation two-score win. I agree. And I can I, I want to <laughs> workshop this take. Kentucky defense, sneaky Top 10 unit in the nation? I don't hate it. Maybe because we're finding out stuff. I I think that's the Georgia offense. The score lied about the Georgia offense this game because you mentioned it when Alabama got that big lead. They're playing soft coverage. Obviously, you're not going to play as hard when you're up 20, 30 points, though. Are, are we ever going to have a conversation about a, a lad mcconkey and Brock Bowerless Carson Beck? No, I, mean, I this think guy is... that's what I want to talk about today because I think that's a huge point because he, you're everyone's going to see the score and they're going to think it was close all game and whatnot. You're going to see 41-34. But if you watch the game, he was missing throws left and right. Oh, my god, He gosh. was the reason they lost this game. It, it, you can't blame it on the defense. The defense stepped up in that second half where it didn't matter. And also, Beck, how poor he was playing. He was putting the, the Alabama offense in phenomenal territory. So the mm-hmm. defense was already screwed as it was. This was, I, this was such a disaster from Carson Beck. I think I texted you guys in the group chat where – I mean, is he? I mean, is he even looked at as a top guy in the draft anymore after this game? I mean, this is going to leave such a bad taste in people's mouth. It's gonna the film is going to look so bad after this. Yay! It's cute you beat Joe Milton in Tennessee last year. Yay! It's cute you beat the one of the worst Ole Miss defenses ever last year. Beat Bama when you have the web, you had Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers and you couldn't beat Bama last year. You come back, you you get a chance at revenge. And you were terrible. Three interceptions, and they were bad. That last one was so pitiful. They kept running that fade route, and he kept underthrowing it. He was underthrowing receivers. It was it was alarming watching Brock Bowers in that game. And I think that's a testament to Georgia. It really hasn't played that many tough teams in the last year and a half. And when they when they do, you know, it's like we saw Alabama last year in the in the SEC championship, and then this year, like they haven't really impressed when they do play the tough teams. They have, I mean, no, they, they just grind it out. Yeah. And we saw it with Kentucky two weeks ago. And then we, obviously we see Alabama win this game. And it's like, I, I think Kirby smart has, uh, he has, has to have some type of like uh fear of crimson. That has to be it because he's what <laughs> one in six now against Alabama in his career. It's, it's absolutely crazy stuff. And we talk about Carson Beck looking at Georgia's schedule. 
it doesn't it doesn't get much easier easier they go to texas they get to host tennessee which is a plus but that defense has looked great so far and then they need to they have to go to mississippi and play ole miss who i understand lost to this kentucky team but this is the same kentucky team that kept it close against georgia so things don't lighten up for carson beck and kirby smart anytime soon and what's they, they go ahead They don't, and and I'm really happy we're talking about it in the way that we are because I I kind of felt like I was like I was getting like gaslighted on Sunday morning (laughs) when I woke up and was seeing Georgia number two in people's AP poll votes or um like it like it was almost like oh I'm not sure if you were watching the same game that I was watching like I'm not on a panic button. Um, with Georgia as a whole, but I'm kind of on a panic button of Georgia winning the national championship. Like they, I think there'd have to be a big shift for them, for me to feel comfortable with them doing that. Obviously they'll have, um, opportunities down the stretch, Ole Miss, uh, Texas, Tennessee, et cetera, just teams that they have an opportunity to, to beat and to kind of redeem themselves in my mind. But like, I feel like people just kind of took the Georgia comeback as more of a that shows how great Georgia is when I really think it was Alabama took their foot. I mean, it was partially that, but Alabama took their foot off the gas too much and that kind of bit them in the butt, but then they saved at the end. But like Georgia's not the number two team in the country. They're like five or six, which like that's not that bad, but. But like I'm tired of pretending that that jo- this didn't look bad on Georgia as a whole, even with and, the second half. And Dylan, you mentioned the schedule going forward. You talk about it, and you're like, can Georgia miss the college football playoff? Uh, I mean, it's the not pro- yes. crazy. I think the they issue can. is they won't, but they they can. I think the issue is I think if they win one out of those four between Ole Miss, Tennessee, Texas, Bama, obviously they lose to Bama, but if they can lose or they can win one of those, that alone I think gets them into the college football playoff. It, it sounds really? crazy. If they go if they go 9 and 3, I think they're in. If they go 8 and 4, that's when the they're because, out. Because Dylan, um, it, this is what it's going to come down to is it's going to be a 9 and 3 Michigan versus a 9 and 3 Georgia. They're going to give Georgia the edge. Oh, I know. I've got a scenario: an eleven and one Mizzou that got crushed by Bama. Eleven and one Mizzou gets in. No questions asked. Yeah, I think so too. Eleven and one Mizzou gets in. I think ten and two Mizzou gets in. And look, I'm one of those people where it's like these losses have to matter. Like I'm, I'm in that camp. But the Mizzou schedule compared to the Georgia schedule is like, man, the schedule makers screwed up there. Because yeah. it is way easier for Mizzou. It's brutal for Georgia. Um, I just think Georgia needs to show some life. I think Georgia's not going to lose all three of those major games. The Ole Miss, the Tennessee, the... But, I don't think they will, Texas. I don't think they will. But what if we talked about the Georgia stinkers and we're like, ah, you know, they just do that. They do that sort of thing, you know, against Kentucky. Maybe this is what they are. Maybe yeah, this is what may- they are. That's what I'm saying. Maybe this is what they are. Maybe they are an 8-4 and four football team. That's like, that's why I, the question I wanted to pose was leaving this game. Do you think more of Alabama or do you think less of Georgia? At, mm, I both. I really both, think both is fair the enough because both, Al- both. Alabama impressed the crap out of me, man. Jalen Milrow. I mean, just, you know, uh, what, what does Dick Vitale call a, a PT player, big time player, whatever. That, that's who Jalen Milrow is. This guy. I mean, he's just stepped up in this game. A lot. A lot of talk about this guy not being a good quarterback, I heard the last two years. A lot of talk about him not being a good quarterback and not being able to make the seven, eight-yard throws. I saw a lot of seven, eight-yard throws made. I also made the deep, he also yeah. made the deep throws, and he was running all over Georgia. He made he, it all work. He was dynamite in this game. And I think also people misremember Jalen Milrow in that Rose Bowl against Michigan was the only reason Alabama was even remotely in that game. That should have been a three-score game against Michigan. Yep. But Jalen Milrow was making insane plays happen. Yeah, I was completely wrong about this game. I, I leave this game so impressed with Alabama and Kalen DeBoer, how they were able to come out and punch the crap out of Georgia. They punched him in the face right at the start of this game. And they pull, ended up pulling it out. They gave up the lead later on, let off the gas. You don't love that, but which is not typical of a Kalen DeBoer coach team, actually. Yep. But yep. 
I and then Georgia, I don't know if it's Georgia as a whole. I still think this defense isn't bad. I think they got punched in the face because we saw them in that second half. I know Alabama let up on the gas, like we said, but the defense was actually good for Georgia. I'm not really worried about their defense. I'm full blown panic button on Carson Beck. When he yeah. doesn't have guys, like when he doesn't have first round, second round talent to throw to, it hasn't looked great. And, and he, he's a guy. Like he does. It's not like he doesn't have five star talent. He's throwing to. Yeah, and, and I hand up. I kind of fell I fell to this bias. I thought Carson Beck was probably you know first or second best quarterback in the SEC when we did our SEC preview show, and now. I don't know if I could say that, right? Like a lot of his numbers don't look that great and they haven't had a gauntlet outside of Alabama yet. So yeah, it's not great. I don't know if I can sit here and say that I think Beck is a top three, top three quarterback. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. In the SEC? In the SEC. So you're going, you're going Dart, Milro. Dart, Milro. Nico. Nico. I would break up. I'll go Brady Cook. I'm not scared. Uh, Arch Arch Manning. Arch, the, the, or, <laughs> yeah, oh, would 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 Georgia would Carson Beck be second string for Texas? <laughs> Just make that like the clip. Yeah, would, but, would no, but Arch I, Manning. I, I but I wanted to say like I think going back to do you think better about Alabama or do you think worse of Georgia? It is both. It's like in my mind there were three teams ish that separated themselves from the mix as like, like really national championship contenders. And then there was the national championship contenders, but like a little less. So like that next group, like four Mm -hmm. through seven or whatever, I think I had Alabama in that four through seven group and Georgia in that one to three group. And I think they just switched in my mind. They just switched. Tennessee, Tennessee is one, one more went away from fully being in that group. Oh no, I totally agree. They're still they're sitting at the top of the second group in my mind, but I'm ready to move them up with with one more big win with a win over Bama. I mean, well, obviously a win over Bama would put them there, but a win over Bama wouldn't make me move Bama out of that group. It would just make me add Tennessee to it. Um, yeah, but yeah, that, Carson Beck that that was an issue. Carson Beck, it's an issue. Like it, like I don't like to overreact to one game, but. It's really hard. Like, I watched that game. I was like, I've always been, you know, in the camp. Not that it's been, like, an argument, but just, like, Carson Beck is better than Jalen Milbro. And I'm like, I watched that game, and I'm like, you just can't. Like, your take is invalid if you think Carson Beck is better than Jalen Milrow at this point. Like, I was wrong. And, I was and wrong. It's, not, it's not even a one, one-off one game. It's, it's really what we've seen so far this season and the end of last season where Carson Beck, did not show up in the biggest spots, and Jalen Milrow has time and time again. And I, I, you know, like I said, going into that game, I, I was like, oh, you know, Georgia, they have the stinkers against Kentucky. But we talk about this, so you know, we see Florida State lose to Georgia Tech week zero, and we're like, oh, that's just different. Is that just who Georgia Tech? Is? It, it, you know, maybe maybe that was a fluke. Florida State's not actually that bad. Turns out Florida State is probably the worst team in the ACC now. But maybe these games are just telling us stuff. Maybe there isn't this this switch that can be flipped all of a sudden. Maybe Georgia is just kind of an eight and four SEC team. I don't think that's a crazy statement. Dylan, great segue. Top five. It's that time top, of the week. Top five. People are gonna be upset. People are gonna be upset just like every other Boise week. Number State too. How'd you know? <laughs> Ashton uh Jeanty. <laughs> Don't jaunty. even go there. Jaunty. Ash uh, Jaunty. Jointy. Joint <laughs> Jointy. Number five. Number five. We're going to Big Ten country. Penn State. Ranked win against Illinois. I think by two touchdowns, if I remember correctly, 14 points. It was uh, a gross game. Did you watch? I didn't I didn't get to watch any of it. <laughs> Good were, call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, it was it was a, it was on during the Bama Georgia commercials. And then I yeah. would, I would see Bama Georgia came back on and I'd quickly flip back. Yeah, yeah. Penn State number five, number four. I'm going Tennessee off a of bye week. I had them at three last week, but certain certain events have caused uh, a shake up there. Number three Texas. Uh, number two Alabama. Big win against Georgia. Big big win. Number one still Oregon. Right. You win the games in front of you. They go to UCLA. They win by two scores, three scores. Uh, 
still liking this Oregon team. Nothing to nothing to worry about here. They play Michigan State Friday, which will be uh, an, an, an interesting game. Uh, first four out. First four out. First four out. Number nine, USC. Number eight, Michigan. On the record, they are going to lose this weekend. It's very unfortunate. Number seven, Miami. Number six, Georgia. Mm. So no Ohio State in the top nine yet. Did you watch that game? No, I didn't watch the game. I did just you saw the watch highlights. that? It did not look good. There was some legitimate cause yeah, for concern it, it, there. Yeah, winning by 30-plus is a real bad thing. Oh, oh yeah. So, okay, so we're scoreboard watching now. Okay. No, as long I, I literally as, long said as we're that's setting what the I standard. Did. I'm as literally telling you I scoreboard watching that game. I did not as get long a chance as, to watch Ohio State, Michigan State. As long as we're setting the standard for the show, I, I will keep that noted. Yes, uh, it, yes they yeah, won yeah, by yeah. three possessions, oh, but so it did Dylan, not. Dylan, uh, did you stay up for Oregon-UCLA then? Uh, no, but I deep dove into the stats. Oh, you deep dove into the stats, but you didn't actually watch the game because if you watched well, the game, that was very unimpressive by Oregon. I didn't just look at the score and be like, oh, there's two scores like you did with Ohio State. I watched the highlights. What do you mean? Okay, all right, all right. Next. Did you see that Ohio Jeremiah State. Smith end around? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> well, did you yeah, see that well, catch? That catch was beautiful. Yeah, it's not like, that impressive. I like, so I like my receivers catching with two hands. I can't wait for like, when use two uh, hands, when, fundamentals. If Ohio State beats Oregon in that game and Jeremiah Smith has a big game, I can't wait for everyone to say he's already better than Marvin Harrison. That's that's that will happen. Be, that will one hundred percent happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Top five quarterbacks. Let's get this done. You want five through one or one through five, Dylan? Five to one. Five to one. Okay, number five. Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers is number five on this well, list. He's injured okay. right now. If he's back, he can move up. But I don't want to take him out since he's. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to dock him for being hurt. And I also think this is a very cautious injury because I think yeah. they're like, eh, Arch Manning, let's get some nice playing time here. Let's get you get you going. Quinn Ewers just get one thousand percent healthy going forward. Number four, I have Jackson Dart. I was very disappointed with that Kentucky game. Kentucky might just have an elite defense. I think Dart was okay enough in that game, but you can't lose to Kentucky at home. You cannot lose to Kentucky at home, especially a team that got demolished by South Carolina. I know South Carolina is one of the best D-lines in the nation, but you can't lose that game. Number three, Shadur Sanders. Shadur Sanders is okay. playing okay. out of his mind right now. I honestly should have probably put him at two because number two, I have Jalen Milrow. Jalen Milrow moved from six to two on this list. After that game, I don't know how you can't. And all and number one, it's still this guy. I think he's the Heisman. It's just unfortunate he doesn't play in the SEC or the Big Ten where he gets to play big time national games. Cam Ward, if anybody watched that Virginia Tech game on Friday night, Cam Ward, the plays that guy was making where he was sacked and then shoveled it to his tight end, th those are just Heisman moments right there. You watch the you watch the game, and you go, boom, right there. That's a Heisman moment. He was playing. He. He was so, so good against Virginia Tech. This isn't even the same Miami team we've seen since the early 2000s. That's how crazy Cam Ward is. He has single-handedly elevated this team so much that they they actually have national relevance. They're probably going to make the college football playoff. They're probably going to be a top three seed in the college football playoff. Cam Ward's still my Heisman pick, and I still think he's the best quarterback in this country. And if I had the number one overall pick in the NFL draft right now, I would go Cam Ward. I don't hate cool. that. It's hard. It's hard to go against that. Uh, yeah, no. I I look at your. I think my first comment on your power rankings is, uh, is I do have respect. Uh, I don't know if you heard the Manning family this week was like you can't lose your spot due to injury. You also can't lose your spot in Carter's quarterback power rankings mm, due to yeah. injury. Um. So you know it's old school. I love it. The one guy mm. is. The one guy, like, it, it's not as much based off of his resume, but how close are you to putting Noah Fafita in this conversation? Because the the West Coast people who watched were oh, reminded he how good he Utah was game. Saturday night. He was so good. I think so. I'm just curious. I'm not. I don't disagree. I'm not saying he should be in the top five, but like, like, where does he stand in the uh, in the runner ups? Additional votes being received kind of category he's a, he's in the first four out somewhere in that first four out because 
Arizona versus Utah, if you stayed up and watched that game, that dude was making unreal throws. And it wasn't just F it, McMillan's down there somewhere. It was just dynamite throws to guys <laughs> I've never heard of making touchdowns, making plays. Also, that Utah defense what is a little phony. I just need to see Fafita do it multiple weeks now because he really hasn't been that impressive this season outside of that Utah game. He played against Kansas State. Oh, my gosh, this guy couldn't complete a pass. He couldn't do anything. Now his offensive line isn't great, but he couldn't he couldn't complete a pass in that game. Northern Arizona, he put up a stinker too. But now if we get to see what we saw in the Utah game, this guy's the top five quarterback in this country. NFL quarterback, I have questions, but top five quarterback in college football. He he does feel like uh, I think we had this conversation over Tex Carter. Like he's someone that this might be the year for him to try to go pro, but with that being said, he feels like the Cam Ward like gets a massive at five million dollars in NIL to go play at Bama when Milrow's gone next year, or something mm-hmm. like that, or go to Ohio yep. State. Like he feels like the next guy for that for the Cam Ward transition. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say with Noah Fafita, I agree he hasn't been that great this year. I do think you're saying and it wasn't just the Jalen McMillan effort Jalen Mc, or effort McMillan's down there somewhere. There were a <laughs> few of those. There were still a few of them, which I don't blame him. Uh, he looked fantastic. I know he's had kind of an up and down year. I think really the key is if he does this again and beats BYU in Provo, I think he's got to get in there. Like, I think for me, that's like a benchmark that... <laughs> Yeah, he's part fantastic. Of me says yes. I'm scared. I'm scared. Part part of me BYU says fan, yes, I'm and scared. part of me says no because the BYU DBs uh, might 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 be, might be struggling in that game. <laughs> yeah, so they, we'll they see. might. <laughs> we we'll see about that one. Dylan, your by low team, by low team, by low team asterisk, or player asterisk by low entity. I'm buying low on Nico Heisman. I'm buying low on Nico Heisman coming off of a buy, coming off of an Oklahoma game where Heupel went on record and said, we pulled off the gas. You know, we're missing our two tackles. We're not going to risk anything. We got up. We're just going to game manage, right? So Nico was not unleashed to his full potential. And looking at Tennessee's schedule moving forward, th- it's, a, it's a similar Jalen Milrow situation where Nico is going to have the opportunity to make the big plays. And right now we're seeing an inflated pr- price on Milrow due to recency bias. And that's not me saying I don't think it's warranted. That's not me saying I don't think Jalen Milrow can win the Heisman. I very much think he can. But if you were wanting to buy on a player that has the upside or the ability to perform well, has will have the stage to do so, I think you have to go Tennessee and Nico Heisman here. I don't hate that at all. And it's not, he hasn't played all. poorly, too. I, do want to, I want to make that point. He hasn't played poorly. He just hasn't had to do much. And he's looked great when Hypo has decided to, to put on the gas. So, you know, I'm and, looking at hosting Alabama. I'm looking at at Georgia. Uh, plenty of opportunities for him to show the world what he's made of. And we've also, we, we, we make that point. People are like, oh, well, one game doesn't matter. One game doesn't matter. Look at the narrative shift between Carson Beck and Jalen Milrow after this weekend. One game oh, does a, matter. Yep, especially being slotted into that prime, like 7.30 ESPN game. Like, yeah, 100%. When everybody's watching, that's what matters. Mm, okay. Ben, what's your buy low entity in college football? Um, it, It's a similar topic, but I'm buying low on Travis Hunter as a Heisman candidate because I think everyone has been saying Travis Hunter would win the Heisman, but the team stinks. And I think after this past weekend, it's kind of like – Maybe they don't stink. Like oh, I think, I think they are. I think they're disqualified. Like because, like I think they're disqualified from uh, being. And he's disqualified from being Heisman contention if Colorado misses a bowl game, right? But if Colorado's eight and four, is that enough to like not disqualify him from the Heisman? That's kind of my question. I feel like eight wins might be kind of the the place in which it's like okay. He's not going to not win the Heisman because his team stinks. If if Colorado Thoughts. wins eight games, Travis Hunter, Travis Hunter deserves the Heisman if Colorado wins eight games. Because the fact that he's playing nearly a, 
he's playing nearly 100% of snaps is one of the craziest things. It gets told to us all the time in college football every week. Travis Hunter's doing this. I don't think people are realizing how crazy that actually is, though. He's playing one, and he's playing wide receiver and DB. Yeah. This is crazy, Dylan. Yeah, this is. I, I believe we had a similar conver- like a conversation about this to where last year we saw Jaden Daniels win on a nine and three team because the teams that performed so well didn't have that star. You have Michigan, who are national champions, but they a lot of that work was split. A lot of the top teams didn't have that one star. The only problem I would have with Travis Hunter winning Heisman on an eight and four Colorado team is if. Alabama runs the table and Jalen Milrow looks awesome. I, it's it's going to be really hard to not give him the Heisman or even if you want to say Tennessee, any of the teams remaining that go undefeated and they have a star that pops out. Even if it's not as impressive as Travis Hunter, I think the only path for Travis Hunter to win the Heisman if Colorado goes like eight and four is if there isn't a star on a top team that just shines. So Miami, Miami goes 12 and 0. Is it Cam Ward or an eight and four Travis Hunter? I think I think you have to go Cam Ward. I, I I okay, let me take that back. I think I think they will give it to Cam Ward. Mm, okay. Yeah. Nice yeah, and, and my there. point with and my point with this whole thing is that like like Colorado, I think we just have written Travis Hunter off as a Heisman contender just because we've assumed oh, the team's not good enough. And I think the team's sneaky good enough to not for him to not be disqualified. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's like, mm-hmm. oh, Colorado's fantastic or Travis Hunter is a lock to win the Heisman now. It's just like, hey, they might sneaky win eight games and then this is more of a conversation whereas we didn't anticipate it being one. I do agree, though, that if like Cam Ward, Milrow continues to put up the numbers they're putting up and winning 11, 12 games, um, then they're going to win it. But Travis Hunter is not disqualifying himself. He's probably getting a invitation to New York. Let me ask this. I don't want to sound ESPN. I don't want to sound like hot take first takey. Is Colorado a big 12 title contender? No, 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 I don't think so. I think you don't uh, think so. This conference, I will say I'm not, this conference kind of stinks. Well, Utah beat them, so they. Uh, I don't know. I, I'll defer to you guys. You guys are the uh, the the Big Twelve experts here. I'll, I'll say ben. yes, just yes, because like, I I mean, with the Big Twelve as wide open as it is, like I feel like half the conference is a Big Twelve title contender at this stage. Yeah. Um. And like, I mean, are, are if you willing BYU's to write off one, Utah at Colorado's this point? one. No, I'm not yeah, willing to fair. write off Utah. Um, Kansas state. I'm not willing to write off. I will write off Oklahoma state. They suck. Um, <laughs> they suck. They're, that was, they a suck. Big swing. I'm and so miss sick of them. Season. Yeah. Arizona's uh, yeah, kind well, of in the mix. Did... Iowa state's at the top of, can I, yeah, uh, like, can I, I think... can I have a thing? Can I have a thing you guys need to remind me of every off season? If a team's best yes. player gets a DUI, do not let me bet on that team's futures. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That, no, that was my no Georgia. Not, Sounds I mean, good. Clear, clearly something's going on. I mean, I understand the offensive line has been atrocious. The thing is, it's the exact same unit, and they were really good last year. They were solid. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they can't run block. I don't know what's going on there. Oklahoma State stinks. I think you're right there. Utah, if Isaac Wilson is the quarterback the rest of the season, then I think they are a write-off team. I agree. I if if I, Isaac Wilson – if, if I – yeah, they – or well, Cam Rising. If they had Cam Ward, Cam that'd Rising. be scary. Um, yeah. That'd be pretty scary if they had Cam Ward. <laughs> they'd probably be a national title. Like they'd be as good as Miami if they had Cam Ward. Uh, but yeah, I agree. Utah. Like I just think a lot of these conferences are shaping up where it's like, okay, we kind of have an idea where this is trending. The Big Twelve, you don't. Like I think BYU's in the mix. Iowa State's in the mix. Utah's still in the mix, assuming Cam Rising comes back. Kansas State isn't out. Texas Tech's two and zero in conference. I I think I don't think they're good. I don't buy that. But like, there's a ton of teams you can't really rule out this stage. So I'll, I'll have to say is, yes by default. Colorado is not a Big Twelve title contender in my mind because I watched that entire Baylor game. I've watched nearly every snap of Colorado football this season. 
the fact that they needed a Hail Mary to beat Baylor, they got bailed out in that game, beating Baylor at home. UCF, great, you win that game. I think UCF was a little fraudish. I think Kansas State absolutely demolishes Colorado this Saturday night. Or on, no, not this Saturday, October 12th in two weeks. I think Kansas State is going to run all over this team. It's going to be very similar to what we saw in the Nebraska Colorado game. I think Kansas State absolutely dominates them, and then the Colorado hype train just comes to a complete crash, and they're not going to be Big 12 title contenders. I think eight and four is still a possibility because the Big 12 is just no rhyme or reason. It's just cannibalizing itself left and right. There, it is the one thing we do know is the Big 12 is getting only one team in the college football playoff and going forward after this season I think the other conferences the SEC and the Big Ten are gonna be like why are we giving the Big 12 a buy why do they get a buy we, going forward I, I heard rumors the the Big Ten and the SEC are trying to get uh two, I think two guaranteed teams in each conference so a total they, of four from the SEC and Big Ten guaranteed I don't I don't know why they're trying to get another guaranteed team in. They're already going to get it. You don't need it. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. need it. You're going to get it. Yeah. Don't, leave a spot for the ACC. Come on. The Boston ACC College, baby. kind of deserves two spots, and we'll go buy low team. Ladies and gentlemen, the Clemson Tigers are back. They are. They, that's, Absolutely. Everybody's going to think of that Georgia game and be like, oh, they're, you know, they're not a good team. And they've they just are, quietly been destroying teams. They are exactly like that Oregon team from a couple years ago where they got dominated in Atlanta week one against Georgia, and everyone goes, yep, Bo Nix, Oregon, this team stinks. Well, they're done. And then quietly, they're just piecing together dominant, dominant win after dominant win. And Clemson, man, in a weak, very weak ACC they probably have the best de- – not probably. They have the best defense in this conference. They have the best head coach in this conference. There's no reason Clemson isn't back, guys. And they're going to be in the college football playoff, I think. I, they'll definitely find themselves in the ACC championship game. That's 100%. That's Yeah, I don't think there's a world where it's not Clemson-Miami. I, I agree. Boston and college. even if Clemson – and if it, if it goes that way, oh, Boston College, I – I saw that they're they're underdogs this weekend. They're underdogs in Charlottesville. I could do mm-hmm. an hour preview on that game if we had to. <laughs> I, I'm so Except no one wants game. it, unfortunately. No, no, no one cares. No, no one, cares one cares except for like the two of us, for the three of us, <laughs> the, 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 the four of us, including Connor. If he was here, we're all sitting there. Yes. this is that's actually a big game for the, our our futures. I have both Boston College and Virginia, but uh, I think I'd rather have the Virginia win here because I went a little bigger on Virginia. Boston College cashes if they win. Yeah, that's why I want Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Makes all the sense Boston in the Co- world. <laughs> I, think Boston Co- I think Boston College is going to get it regardless. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So, um, all right. And then I was going to do – let's do a three-hour preview on Virginia Tech Stanford, uh, how we like mm. the quarterback. Not just kidding. The Cardinal. <laughs> Uh, dog of the week, Dylan. Dog of the week. Speaking of ACC, oh, going Syracuse over UNLV. We, we're <clears throat> give me the. I'm eating up all the Kyle McCord hype. I understand he had a bad game. I think it was two weeks ago. I don't. Th- I don't think it was last week. Um, McCord ninety PFF rating. We have the UNLV drama. They looked great against Fresno State. UNLV did, but I think a lot of this. I think Syracuse is a six point underdog. A lot of this is stemming from the blowout that UNLV had against Fresno State. I am not buying it. Syracuse, believe it or not, takes care of the ball more than UNLV does. Lower turnover worthy play rate. Love Syracuse. Better quarterback. Give me Syracuse outright against UNLV as a six point dog. Hmm. Go big orange. I don't believe in the Kyle McCord hype. I think a lot of his yards are empty yards, mm-hmm. and his turnovers are a real problem. Uh, but they have a lower turnover worthy play rate than UNLV. So okay, lower turn. He's th- he's throwing so many errant passes, and his mm-hmm. turnovers have been horrendous mm-hmm. and at costly times. Hmm. Okay. All right. Hmm. That's a, that's I thought be wrong. you were going to go Iowa. I can I I don't want to occupy that Iowa hasn't looked that bad this year one a one point loss to Iowa State Cade McNamara has been average and that's really all that they need from him and the defense the run defense is great for Iowa I Ohio State's gonna have to make or Iowa is going to make Will Howard throw the ball down the field he can't do it like we haven't seen him do that 
yeah, well rested. I, I like. I, I don't think they'll win, but I think it's going to be closer than. I, it's like 21, 21 point underdog. I think it'll be close. Mm-hmm. Ben, what's your dog of the week? I'm not going to lie. I was struggling. Syracuse was one that I thought about, but I, I did land on App State. App State mm. plus three. They're going to do mm. it for Boone. They're going to yeah, do it bi- for Boone. Than sports they're going to they're going to denounce they're going to de- denounce Ross Martin. They're going to denounce Connor Sparrow. <laughs> they're they're going to do it despite those guys <laughs> who who are pro flooding. Um, uh, in all serious no- seriousness, though, like I could totally see App State winning this game, and it's not like a massive upset. It's Marshall minus three, but I. I totally just see app state winning and this being something that's like featured on sports center it's like they did it for boone and like that going like trending um the reason is like obviously you're kind of like oh that's not really a real one and it's because i don't really love a ton of the underdogs on the board and i just don't like the board at all i just don't like any of these games and i don't like the underdogs in those games, it's like I was still expecting to look and go, okay, like this game isn't great, but like, ooh, this dog, like I really like them. Like, I don't know. It's just like I don't like the games. The spreads kind of go, eh, yeah, the team that's favored I think is going to win most of the time. Like I don't really have any spicy takes from this. So I'm going to go with like the the bigger than sports like, um, like story, and I, I'll go with that. I'll just go with that. I think SMU is a live dog, and that's going to be my pick here against Louisville. I don't think this Louisville team's all it's cracked up to be. And SMU's quietly been putting together some nice performances. They're putting up big, big numbers. The defense, obviously, is still a concern. The problem is a lot of these dogs you're getting in reverse bounce back spots. So, example, South Carolina was my other pick I was deciding between. I like South Carolina this week because I think that D-line's going to give Jackson Dart trouble. If Kentucky's defense was giving him trouble... What do you think this is South Carolina D line is going to do on the road in South Carolina? But I get scared going against them in a bounce back spot. This feels like it could be a big Jackson Dart game. Louisville obviously lost to Notre Dame last week. I still like SMU get uh, with the, as a dog. They're a seven point underdog in this game. Give me SMU over Louisville. Um, I, I was going to pick Carolina. It was only two and a half, so I thought it was kind of cheap. Also. I think I have to I think I have to ban myself from taking Carolina now. Carolina Auburn's in the do not bet list the rest of the year. I will refuse if so if anybody's parlay pick is Auburn that gets left off right now. You heard it now. Mm. If anybody takes mm. Auburn in anything, it becomes a three leg parlay for me. We'll still put out the graphic and everything and you guys can tail it, but I'm only doing three legs. I refuse to touch Auburn the rest of the season. Hmm. It's hmm. interesting. It's just I always thought it was the team, the team, the team here, but maybe I was wrong. No, it's it's that this team has burned me so many times, and I want you guys to make. Want, I need your guys' support during this time hmm. that I've I have lost. My, Baylor is also going to be in that category as well. This Baylor team is atrocious. I'm done Carter, with them. Carter, there's only 132 teams in Division One, but before we know it, by the end of the season, we're going to have a parlay that's just nothing. It's no, I'll make a rule that those are the only two teams we can, uh, I, I, we each pick two teams we can't do. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'll, whoever bring no, it on. I, did you have Auburn? No, mm. I bet against no. Auburn two weeks ago and it was great. Super quick. Washington's favorite against the number 10 Michigan Wolverines. What's really bad situation. Really bad situation. Um, the, Michigan got outplayed against Minnesota. We got very lucky to win that game. It's not great. Um, seven and five, eight and four is a real possibility. And it's just, it's what it is. You know, as long as we're competitive, the last game of the year, and it's not a blowout, oh, that's all I can hope for. Um, mm. We'll still cheer for them. We'll still be really upset when they lose. But the reality is we can't, there's not a lot we can do right. So we don't have Connor's parlay pick yet. We'll put it out on the graphic on socials, but let's get our picks out of the way now. Ben, what's your pick? I think I've been going back and forth, but I think I'm going to go Arizona State minus three against Kansas. I I was a big believer in this Kansas team in the preseason. Kansas is bad. Mm. Kansas is on the road. Um, They're playing uh, at Arizona State only three points. I think this is a spot where Arizona state wins by like six or seven. 
Uh, Kansas is just falling apart. Yeah, they're just falling apart. They might need to make a quarterback change, frankly, soon. Um, yeah. a, a lot of people are talking <laughs> about how bad Jalen Daniels has been. Um, they've been really bad. They've been really, really bad. I don't see any reason for that changing right now. I'm going to go with Arizona State by more than a field goal. Don't hate the over in that game either. That's a late night over. Do not hate that whatsoever. Dylan, what's your pick? I'm going to Iowa, plus 21. This is, I understand, Dylan, you hate Ohio State. Dylan, okay, fine. But Iowa's run defense is really good, and we've seen early on from Ohio State, if you make Will Howard throw the ball down the field, that's when things get a little bit hairy for this team. And Iowa's going to be able to stop the run. Their coverage grade is very high. I like this Iowa defense to do enough to keep this game close. Cade McNamara has been fine. Uh, he hasn't really lost him games, so I'm going to Iowa here uh, to keep it within three touchdowns. I have a gross pick. I love it. No, you don't. Okay. Over. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's Washington. UVA Boston College over 51. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know. If, I, I don't even it. know if Castellanos is playing. I know. I know. It's so and gross. Over 51 for Boston College UVA. I don't even think he is playing, and that's how gross that pick is. Hey. Also, I got Connor's pick. Okay. What is it? He's doing it again. He can't, He has a problem. Connor has a problem with the West Virginia Mountaineers because he's taking them plus four and a half against Oklahoma State. He is obsessed with this West Virginia team. I just hope he knows it's not going to happen, and Neil Brown's probably not even going to be there after this season. <laughs> Garrett Green, West baby. Virginia. Yeah. All right. That's a parlay, Jesus. I guess. That's a parlay. Can I can I announce some breaking news? Go for it. Uh, according to Pete Thamel, uh, it's not directly college football related, but it's college sports related. Gonzaga is set to join the Pac-12 today. Announcement coming soon. Oh, so everyone clown Brett part McMurphy. Two. G- uh, yeah, everyone clown Gonzaga Brett McMurphy. Gonzaga joining the Pac-12 part two. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Yay. Uh, can, can I bring something up here? Uh, yeah. Carter, when Ben had breaking news, you seemed almost excited to hear it. And when I have breaking news, it's... Uh, I've yeah. been better lately. You huh? redeemed yourself. Yeah, what can I say? I'm, yeah. I'm on my redemption arc. You redeemed yourself. Connor had great breaking news recently, too. So we're, we're back on the breaking news train. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll be a breaking news show. Yeah, we'll... Uh, I, dude, I, you see, you guys see Adam Schefter's probably going to be the next Woj. I hate that. I don't like that. Well, the, in that, that's kind of my point where it proves that these news breaking guys, where yeah, they work super hard. It's not impressive. You, this, that mm. clearly exposes what the game is. It's not holy crap. These guys are unbelievable, and they have these crazy relationships. It's it's they have the the agencies and the networks are working hand in hand together to break news to each other. It's. What, like what are we doing here? It's he. It's yeah. I don't want to say, and I don't want to say a certain word to call someone that's demeaning, but it's 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 he. It's a human press release essentially. Like what are we doing? Like and it's not. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, I'm so sad. Woj is gone. I'm gonna miss Woj bombs. You're missing a notification, a tweet. Like <laughs> Woj wasn't entertaining on TV. He wasn't. I I, I wasn't sitting there be like, man, he is awesome. He's just breaking news. He, he's literally it's it's Chat GPT what they're doing. Like yeah, just and, have AI have AI write these tweets. They probably are writing these tweets. Yeah, and it's like Woj. It's like I'll miss Woj. It's like okay, you'll just get it from Shams or John, or Schefter yeah, now. Yeah. Like like it doesn't news is the news. It doesn't matter who's breaking it. And even if none of these guys existed, I'd just find out 15 minutes later, which would be a tragedy if I just found yeah, out 15 would. minutes later. <laughs> But but it yeah, to really go along with that, it would really suck to hear from the player. It would really, it really, so... really suck to hear. Oh, okay, go ahead. It 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 is great. Like I, I think it's just so poetic that that like Adam Schefter set himself up. Like he's just like talking at ESPN. He's just like the lives. He just wanted his life back. And he's like, I'll take his job too. Like that's fine. Yep. <laughs> like just, <laughs> yep. it, it just, yeah, it's just so cheesy, classic, like fake ESPN. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it would be a shame if college kids got to announce where they're going. You know, that would be a shame. You know, if high school kids got to announce where they're going to school. But you know, Woj. It's about Ron it. Harper specifically. Uh, he, uh, Dylan Harper, like he he he's D- done it multiple no, times. No, not Ron, guys. not Ron. Dylan, 
Dylan Harper's <laughs> the one. I do love that. That shows what where we're Dylan? at with this call. Nothing. This call. This I college football something. Saturday. Say I it. think this college football Saturday is like where. Um, it shows you where we're going with the Saturday, how the Saturday is going to be with the fact that we're talking about Woj, Schefter, and Gonzaga basketball. And I think that's a great point that we should end the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great part. Uh, make sure to subscribe, rate, review, Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening, at CarterCast on YouTube. Download the Seeky Gap, use code CarterCast, $20 off your first purchase. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for the NFL preview show. Make sure to tune into that. Check out Dylan, MLB, you're back, baby. Playoffs start today. I'm going to hopefully get this thing out before the first game starts. Uh, yeah, MLB. Uh, I, spoiler alert for the for the viewers that watch all the way through Padres win the World Series Padres win the World Series Padres I have the Mets they're they're bad Mets Mets are, I Mets have, are the Mets are bad the Mets, are, the Mets are not bad you have Detroit oh brother no surprise <sighs> yeah that's 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 just not good that's just not good um yeah it's Mets season it's Mets year it's our Mets you know this is our Mets um all right that's it from us <laughs> download CQ use code CarterCast tune into the episode tomorrow and we'll see y'all then bye